Okay, so for today's session, let us talk about the management of uh, normal puparium. Now, when it comes to puparium or postnatal period, this is just a period during which the woman adjusts physically and psychologically to the process of childbirth. Now, we understand to say puparium begins immediately after the delivery of the placenta and membranes and continues for approximately six weeks or until the body returns to its near pre gravid uh, state. And uh, when we talk of puparium, it is uh, during this period that you see certain changes such as um, changes that takes place in the reproductive system, the endocrine system, the cardiovascular system, the GIT, respiratory system, the musculoskeletal system, the integumentary system, all these systems they need to return to their normal state. And this whole process of allowing these structures or systems to return to their normal state uh, is what is described um, as a normal puparium. But apart from that, we understand to say, of course, normal puparium starts uh, at the end of the uh, third stage, of course, to the end of the first um, six postpartum weeks. Uh, but of course, we know to say during this period as well, you are looking at certain things, whether they are improving or not, such as lactation, is the baby be able to breastfeed during this process? You look at the lochia, of course, involution of the uterus, return of the genital tract to normal these are the things that we focus on uh, during uh, puparium so this is just a brief introduction about puparium now we can go and look at uh, the management of normal puparium okay so now with the management of normal puparium uh, with whatever management that you are looking at of course the first thing that you need to look at are the m's and in terms of the aims, you can say to promote uh, breastfeeding, you can say to promote uh, good health uh, through nutrition and uh, hygiene, you can talk about uh, preventing infections, you can also talk about promoting mother to, uh, to child bonding. So these are some of the aims uh, that you can talk about. Then apart from aims, the management of... Uh, uh, of normal puparium is mainly divided into two forms so we'll look at it in terms of the immediate care as well as the uh, subsequent care now when you look at puparium in terms of this management we are talking about a period that we are able to control which is the first six hours after this woman has delivered so when we talk of the immediate care again the immediate care it's in reference to the first one hour after this woman has delivered uh, while this woman is still in the labor ward and then the remaining uh, five hours of course are completed uh, from uh, postnatal ward now this uh, of course depends on the hospital police as well some of the women may be kept maybe even less than an hour in labor ward and then taken for another six hours in postnatal but then whatever the case is this is the area of the management that we are talking about but it is divided in terms of the immediate care as well as the subsequent uh, care now on the immediate care, the first thing, of course, that we talk about are the observations. Now, in terms of the observation, of course, you can say, I will check the temperature, pulse, respirations, and blood pressure uh, for baseline data. Then apart from that, you can say, uh, I'll check the blood pressure uh, every 15 minutes for the first two hours. Uh, then from there, you, you can say uh, half hourly for an hour and hourly for three hours after delivery to rule out um, uh, any cardiovascular complications then apart from that of course you can say i'll check the pulse um, with the same of course uh, times uh, every 15 minutes for the first two hours then half hourly for the first hour for the the, the second hour rather and also hourly for three hours to monitor cardiovascular functioning then, of course, you also say, I'll check the temperature to rule out uh, uh, infections. Then, of course, respirations to rule out respiratory failure. 
But apart from that, the other thing that you need to observe is, of course, the general appearance of the mother, whether cyanotic, weak, or grunting when breathing, as this may indicate maternal uh, distress. Then, of course, um, you can still observe um, other things on the mother as well as uh, the baby. So at this point, you can also talk about uh, observing, uh, getting observations for the baby, child, such as checking the temperature, pulse, respirations for the child to rule out any uh, or for baseline data so that you can rule out any abnormalities. So these are some of the points that you can talk about on uh, observation. Then the second thing, of course, the second heading is examination of the uterus. So on examination of the uterus here, you can say, I will check if the uterus is well contracted uh, and also if the woman is bleeding. Uh, so the first point is, of course, checking whether the uterus is well contracted and if the woman is bleeding. Because if the contract, if the uterus is well contracted, the woman will less likely bleed. But if the uterus is not contracted, and then the woman may uh, likely bleed a lot. Then apart from that, you can say. Uh, the other point you can say, I will observe if the uterus is midway between the upper border of the symphysis pubis and the lower border of the uh, umbilicus as this would indicate uh, uh, involution then the other point of course you can say uh, i will rub the fundal region of the uterus to expel any clots uh, and this ensures that the uterus is well contracted then apart from that the last point you can say I will observe uh, or examine the uterus every 15 minutes in the first two hours, then hourly in the next hour, and of course hourly for the next uh, three hours. So these are some of the points that you can put uh, on examination of the uterus. Then from there now, the next uh, heading is examination of the placenta. So on examination of the placenta, what points can you talk about? So here you can say, uh, I will examine uh, the placenta to rule out uh, any abnormalities such as retained product of conception. Then apart from that, you can say, I will also examine the estimated blood loss as I examine the placenta to rule out postpartum hemorrhage. Then the other thing, of course, you can say, I'll carry out an examination of the placenta by observing the amount of lobes, um, the amount of lobes, and also um, any abnormalities on the maternal side, so as to rule out any fetal or maternal abnormalities. For example, here, if you find that the lobe is retained, then you know to say that is an abnormality and it, it needs to be uh, removed. Or if you see that the uh, lobes are few, then this may indicate that could be the baby was also receiving uh, less oxygen and nutrients, which needs to be sorted as well. So those are some of the points that you can talk about on uh, examination of the placenta. Remember here, you are not talking about all the full details about the procedure of uh, uh, placenta examination, but you're just talking about the cardinal things uh, that you look for during this process. Then the next heading is, of course, assessment of blood loss. So here you are going to say, I will assess the blood loss um, by checking whether it is above 500 mils or below 500 mils, as this may indicate postpartum hemorrhage, uh, as, as this may indicate postpartum hemorrhage if the blood loss is above 500 mils. Then apart from that, you can say, I'll continue checking the blood loss by observing the pad every 15 minutes for the first one hour after delivery, so as to rule out uh, PPH. Then the other point on assessment of blood loss, of course, you can say, uh, I'll measure blood loss by combining the blood lost during uh, delivery as well as the blood muked from the placenta so as to uh, have a correct estimated blood loss to, uh, to rule out postpartum hemorrhage. 
So these are some of the points that you can talk about on assessment of uh, blood loss. Then from there, the next heading is bladder care. So on bladder care, the first thing you can say, um, I will help the woman to use a bedpan and encourage the woman to pass urine if unable to use the toilet so as to empty the bladder. Then apart from that, of course, you can say I will encourage the woman to use the toilet uh, for urination so as to empty the bladder because a full bladder uh, prevents or delays uterine contractions. Then of course, apart from that, you can say if the woman is unable to pass urine, uh, I will pour warm water, warm sterile water on the vulva as this stimulates C urination then the other point of course you can say if the woman still is unable to pass urine i will catheterize the woman so as to decompress the bladder and this promotes uterine contractions so these are some of the points that you can talk about on bladder care remember after the third stage of labor you want this woman's uh, uterus uh, to start contracting as soon as possible because this will promote uh, contractions and prevent this woman from excessively bleeding. Okay, after bladder care, the next woman, the next point, of course, is transfer of the woman uh, to postnatal ward. So at this point, we expect that uh, during the immediate care, you have assessed this in the first one hour and everything is okay between the mother and the child. And this child and the mother can now be taken to postnatal ward. So on this particular heading, you can say, um, once or if the woman's condition is satisfactory together with that of the child, I will transfer the woman to postnatal ward for continuous care. Then apart from that, you are going to say, I will give a comprehensive handover at postnatal ward uh, so for, for effective continuous care. Then apart from that, you can even say, uh, as I give the handover, I will explain all the baselines of the mother and the child and any complications, if at all they experienced any, so as uh, to have comprehensive care at postnatal ward. So those are some of the points that you can talk about on transfer of the woman to postnatal ward. Then from there now, you move on to subsequent care. And subsequent care, it means that now this particular care is being continued from uh, postnatal ward. So on the first heading of environment, you're going to say, I will nest this woman in postnatal ward uh, for easy observation of the mother and the child's condition. Then from there, of course, you can say, I will ensure that uh, the environment is clean to prevent uh, to prevent maternal or puerperal infections or sepsis. Then the other point, of course, uh, you can say, I will ensure that the environment has good lighting for easy observations as I carry out uh, nursing procedures. Then, of course, you can talk about ensuring that you nurse the woman and the child in a warm environment to prevent hypothermia because labor can uh, result in hypothermic state of both the mother and the child. And of course, you can provide uh, warm blankets or extra blankets to promote warmth for both the mother and the child. So those are the points that you can put on environment. And then the next heading is observation. Now at this point, remember, uh, the, the labor ward will do their own observation, but at postnatal as well, these observations need to be done uh, so that you see whether the figures are similar to what uh, they got uh, in uh, labor ward. So that is why we are also doing uh, observations. So on this point for observation again, of course, the first point you can say, I'll check the temperature pulse, respirations and blood pressure for baseline data. Then, of course, you explain, I'll check the temperature to rule out infections. 
uh, then pulse and res uh, pulse and blood pressure to rule out uh, cardiovas uh, to monitor cardiovascular functioning and then of course respirations to rule out uh, respiratory failure or distress then apart from that you can say i will also carry out a full physical examination uh, so you say i'll carry out a full physical examination of the mother and uh, i mean at this point you're carrying out a full physical examination of the mother from head to toe to rule out any abnormalities then apart from that you can say uh, i'll also observe the perineum and vulva for any tears or lacerations uh, so as to give sufficient care so of course the other thing that you can talk about is also observing uh, the fundal height you can say i observe uh, the fundal height uh, whether it is decreasing by a centimeter or 1.5 centimeter uh, and this indicates uh, involution then of course the last point among others you can say i'll assess and observe if the breasts uh, if the breasts are able to produce uh, breast milk as this promotes the lactation so these are the some of the points that you can put on observation under this uh, heading on subsequent care then the next heading is a uh, vulva examination so now when we talk about uh, vulva examination here uh, you can say i'll carry out uh, vulva uh, I'll carry out vulva swabbing so that I can uh, effectively examine the vulva for any abnormalities. Then from there you can say I will remove the perineal pad and inspect for any type, amount and order of lochia so as to rule out any abnormalities and grade lochia accordingly. Remember you, you grade lochia as uh, lochia rubra uh, lochia serosa or lochia alba so that is why you are also checking uh, for lochia then apart from that you can say i will take note of any presence of clots or pieces of membranes present and have them removed as these may uh, impair uterine contractions then of course the other point you can say i'll continue observing or as i carry out valva swabbing i will observe for any active bleeding uh, so as to give sufficient care then apart from that of course you can say i will ensure that the mother is provided with a clean pad uh, so as to promote comfort so those are some of the points that you can add on valva examination then the next headings of course mother to child uh, bonding so when it comes to this particular heading some of the points that you can put on that heading you can say uh, i will ensure that the baby is kept with the mother to promote bonding then apart from that you can say i will ensure that the mother is exclusively breastfeeding the child as this promotes see, bonding then from there you can also talk about ensuring that uh, the baby is kept skin to skin with uh, with the mother as this promotes bonding and attraction so these are some of the points that you can put on uh, mother to child bonding then from there of course now you can talk about psychological care so on psychological care you can say I will explain to the mother about the, st the condition status of the child and her condition so as to allay anxiety. Then apart from that, you can say, I will allow the spouse or support persons to visit the woman so as to promote family support and, and allay anxiety as well. Then the other point you can say, I will explain all procedures and assessments being done on the mother and the child to allay anxiety. Then from there you can talk about providing diversional therapy, such as talking to the woman or providing a, a TV or a radio with soft music, 
so as to calm the patient or the woman rather. So these are some of the points that you can put on psychological care. And at this point, of course, if there is any abnormality on the child or the mother, this is the point when you need to explain to this woman so that she has full understanding. Uh, that's, of course, if the child has uh, any abnormalities. Then from there, now the next heading is ambulation, which is, in other words, exercises, which is important, of course, for this woman uh, who has uh, just delivered. So here you can say, um, I will encourage the woman to perform breathing exercises so as to promote pulmonary ventilation. Then the other point on the same exercises, you can say, I will encourage the woman to lie on her back with the legs flexed as this reduces a uh, lower back pain. Then apart from that, you can say, I will encourage the woman to take uh, some walks within the ward to promote uh, circulation and prevent deep vein thrombosis. Then the other point, of course, uh, you can say, I will encourage the woman when sitting for the chair, for, for the toes, uh, for the toes to touch. Um, I mean, you can say, when I will encourage the woman when sitting uh, for the uh, for, for her to touch the toes, in other words. So the woman should be encouraged to touch her toes. And by doing so, this encourages or promotes um, uterine uh, contractions. Then, of course, apart from that, you can say, uh, I will encourage the woman uh, to exercise by allowing her to lie on her tummy for at least 30 minutes a day as this promotes uterine contraction and reduces excessive bleeding so these are some of um, uh, these are some of the interventions or points that you can put on um, exercise or ambulation then the next point of course the next heading is uh, hygiene so of course on hygiene you can say i will encourage the woman uh, to take frequent baths so as to uh, refresh the woman and promote hygiene. The other point you can say, I will encourage the woman uh, to, to, uh, to perform oral care so as to prevent bad odor and promote oral hygiene. The other point you can say, I'll, I'll perform uh, vulva swabbing so as to promote vulva hygiene or vulva care. Then the other point you can say, I'll encourage the woman to, uh, to wipe herself from front to back and change, the, uh, and change the sanitary pads frequently to encourage or promote hygiene. Then, of course, the other points you can talk about changing soiled linen uh, to prevent infections. You can also talk about other points such as encouraging the woman to wash her hands and as well as uh, keeping short nails to prevent auto infections. So these are some of the points that you can put on hygiene. The next heading is nutrition. Now, what points can we talk about on nutrition? So the first point you can say, I will encourage or I will give the woman nutritious meals, rich in proteins, vitamins, minerals, and carbohydrates to promote a quick recovery. We know to say you can give proteins to repair worn out tissue, carbohydrates for energy, and, uh, and of course the others as well, such as vitamins, the minerals and many others which may promote or which can promote the uh, patient's immune system. But apart from that, you can say I'll give uh, the woman small frequent meals to promote uh, appetite. Then the other point, uh, you can say I'll encourage the woman to drink, uh, to drink uh, energy giving fluids such as yes drink uh, to promote energy and also promote uh, production of uh, breast milk. 
So these are some of the points that you can put uh, on nutrition, in, including just encouraging the woman to eat to eat uh, roughage foods so that you prevent constipation, of course, roughage foods, vegetables, and so on. And this is done to prevent uh, constipation. So the last heading, of course, is care of the baby. So at this point now, in terms of care of the baby, you can say, I will carry out a full physical examination of the baby from head to toe to rule out any abnormalities. Then apart from that, you can say, I will encourage or allow the baby to suck from the mother's breast so as to encourage production of breast milk and nutrition. Then the other point, of course, you can say, I will observe the child's general care or general health status to rule out any abnormalities. Then, of course, you can say, I will also check for the, I'll, I'll check frequently the umbilical cord, whether it is properly clamped to prevent continuous uh, bleeding. Then, of course, the other points you can say, uh, I will carefully check the child's skin uh, so as to rule out any cyanosis which may indicate impairment in breathing pattern. Of course, the other point you can say, I will ensure that the baby is kept warm to prevent hypothermia. Then, of course, the other points you can say, I will continue observing uh, for bowel opening and urination of the child uh, so as to rule out any renal damage or uh, intestinal obstruction. So these are some of the points, among others, that you can talk about on uh, care of the baby. Among others, you can even just talk about changing of nappies to promote comfort to the child. So this is how we can manage a woman uh, for preparium. So if a question for normal preparium comes, this is the management outline that you can use. So make sure that you go through this management outline, uh, get the concept, understand it. And uh, thank you so much for taking time to go through this session. See you next time.